starting. Welcome back to Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette. Today we talk about spring style and I know a lot of people have asked me about it. So we created a video about 14 spring essentials. So you want to check it out. Hit the cart, which is a little information point in the top right corner, and you can get there from there. Also, we asked you what time of the day would work for you and what kind of time. So a lot of people said they want it on weekends, and so we accommodated that. So let's hope it, it works out well. And uh, one of the yeah questions we had was, I want to buy a classic man's hat for the summer. Style, do's and don'ts. So personally, I think when you have a hat, it uh, can be quite insulating. So for spring, summer, or especially for spring, you want something that's a little more airy, meaning like a straw hat or a Panama hat, which just has an open weave, so you can actually feel the air flowing through. The next thing to consider for a spring hat is the brim. Now, not all brims look great with your face shape. It, it depends on what you have, but it's too extensive to go really in depth into that. I'll make another video about it. But essentially, the wider your brim, the more shade you get, which is especially helpful when it's really hot outside. So it's something you have to keep in mind. And ideally, I like the kind of colorful or springiness in, well, you want a color that's light. So a Panama hat is usually white, and traditionally they have a black band. Now, I don't find it very fitting for spring outfits, so I suggest you get a colorful band, such as green or maybe blue or red. It just adds an entirely different character to the hat and makes it distinctly springy or summery. Okay. Um, can I wear a tie to to a pair of Academy Green Go to Hell pants. I'm not quite sure to a pair of Academy Green Go to Hell pants. Well, Go to Hell pants, if you don't know what they are, please check out our guide. It's basically a pair of chinos that has embroidery on it, or it's quite bold, and it basically says fuck you to the rest of the world. Um, you can wear a tie with it. I'd be careful because if you have a jacket, um, it has to be very subdued because the go-to-hell pants are so loud. So I'd use your best judgment with it. Um, I think you can wear a tie with it. Keep it simple. Keep it solid. Don't go flashy. Don't go with strong colors. Maybe something in navy blue and maybe with a jacket. Don't just wear the go-to-hell pants with a tie. Um, okay. Gloves in the spring. Well, it really depends on the climate you're in. Personally, I love to wear them when it's about... 40 degrees, sometimes even 50 degrees. So in in Celsius, that would be anywhere from zero to 10 degrees. I suggest you go with unlined gloves because otherwise it's way too hot. Uh, an unlined glove is really comfortable. It gives you a little more grip. You can use like driving gloves or personally, yeah, I definitely love unlined gloves for those in between seasons and in early spring. In later spring when it gets warmer, I usually don't wear them anymore. Some people like to wear them just because they get cold hands easily, but um, that's entirely up to you. Um, when dressing for spring, would you suggest sticking with the same outfit throughout the day, or could I also wear a different outfit at night? Well, again, it depends on your surroundings and your environment and your events. Let's say you work as a bike courier during the day, I'd suggest you get something very different than if you go to the opera at night. So it really depends on, on what's going on in your life and what events you have. For example, you're at work and you go to happy hour afterwards, wear the same thing. Like, don't go through the lengths of changing. I mean, it's a big pain in the butt. Um, most breathable fabric, linen, cotton, or fresco. Now, that's one of the most misperceived things I find that people think a specific material makes it more springy or summery. Now, let's talk about the looks. Yes, a linen jacket or a cotton jacket wrinkles differently than wool. It wrinkles more so and it's 
typically more associated with spring. That being said, you can weave cotton or linen or wool in a way that it becomes super tight, super heavy, and not suited to spring at all because there's no airflow, it's insulating, and so there's really no point. That being said, fresco is a wool fabric that sometimes can be quite heavy, up to about 300 or 350 grams, um, 13, 14 ounces, but it has an open weave structure, so when you stand, you can literally feel air blowing through on your skin, which is a cooling sensation and it's quite comfortable. So, when you look for a, a fabric that is breathable, you have to look at the weave and how open it is. A good way to do it is just hold the fabric next to a light source and see how much you can see through with a hand on the other side, and an open weave will be really transparent. You can almost read the newspaper through it. So that's something to keep in mind to get a breathable fabric for spring-summer. Thoughts on men's umbrellas. Personally, I like the look of umbrellas. I have one that is like green with red stripes. I also have a blue one. Now the problem is when you have a nice umbrella, people are much more likely to steal it from you. So pay attention to that. And the other thing is it's convenience. I often find an umbrella can be rather inconvenient, especially when you travel. Um, so to kind of prevent that, maybe if you drive with a car, have one in the car. Otherwise, it instantly makes you stand out and it's a very elegant thing to have. Um, I suggest if you go for, for stylish reasons, maybe go with an all-stick umbrella, um, which means like the holder and the, the, the stick part are made out of one piece, can be really nice. Of course, if you go in an, like if you wanna be elegant, the slimmer the umbrella, the better. Um, traditionally, silk canopies were used. I think they're much more, or they're, they're harder to maintain and you can hardly find them anymore, even from like um, makers like Malia, um, they, they hardly offer them anymore. And, and the reason is they're just hard to maintain. So I think you can do it. Especially in the spring, go with a bolder color. It just gives your presence a huge pop. So maybe if you do that, tone down the rest of your outfit, just so you're not like a clown. Um, what do you think about tropical patterns on ties? So what exactly do you mean by that? Is it like a Hawaiian pattern or do you mean watermelons and palm trees? Um, I think a madras pattern can look really nice and we have a madras guide that you can check out on our website, use the search function. It's um, a tropical somewhat pattern in that sense. I think you can have a paisley summery pattern with whites and purples, but I would stay clear from like Hawaiian shirt style ties or, or like silk hand painted ties because it's more gaudy usually, it's not very stylish. What type of trousers are your favorites for spring? That's a tough one. Um, first of all, I like seersucker. And to learn more about that, check out our seersucker guide. It's basically a cotton fabric that is woven and the yarn used for it is over twisted, so it's slightly wrinkly and it's very lightweight. It doesn't wrinkle very much, even though it's cotton because it's twisted so heavily. And I just think it's an elegant way to, to dress in the spring. It's still comfortable um, and I oftentimes wear it when other people wear shorts. So I can wear it with a jacket, you can wear it as a suit. I like it particularly as a combination. Um, I have a charcoal wool suit and a black silk tie. Would a navy silk pocket square go well with it? Now that's a, a very general question and it's not particularly suited for, for spring um, because charcoal is an, I mean, it's an all year round business color basically, but it's not very springy per se. If you have a black tie, avoid wearing something that is navy adjacent to it because black and navy usually don't mix very well unless you have a black pair of shoes with a navy suit. Otherwise, stay clear of that. What do you consider dressing down and when do you do so? Well, dressing down is, is a relative thing, right? For me, it just means dressing less formal than I usually dress. So I make it dependent on the occasion. If I'm at home, I'm dressing down, 
because the the majority like intent is to be extremely comfortable and to have maybe a fabric that that doesn't constrict you. It's very easy to move in around. So you just have a different mindset of, of dressing. Also, you know, if, if I'm going to a, let's say, barbecue party or garden party of a friend, and I know they're very casual, well, I wear something that, that's casual for me, you know, like that may be, still be more formal in the sense that I wear seersuckers when they wear shorts, but it's still in the same realm of things. It's still springy. Um, let's say I go to a spring wedding and I know the bride and the groom are not people who like to dress up. So I'm not going to go there all decked out in a morning coat because I would you know, steal their show and it's their day. So I adapt my style to whatever is appropriate for the event. Are you going to make a video on espadrilles? Well, actually, um, I've had espadrilles for years. It's kind of funny. I first encountered them during a drip in, in Barcelona years ago. And then I learned that they, in Spain at least, make them in, in Mallorca. And uh, so it's kind of a traditional shoe there. And originally they used a, a ute material, a sole, and then they started adding some rubber at the bottom. I actually visited a... <laughs> <coughs> Sorry, I actually visited a um, factory that made espadrilles in Spain. And it was interesting to see they also used uh, recycled rubber tires, which are extremely durable, and made kind of an espadrille shoe out of it. So yeah, I could, I could make a video out of it. Thanks for uh, the inspiration. Can I have a light blue sweater under a jacket? Or is it more of a fall style? I mean... Light blue, I think, is great for spring. I'm wearing a light blue silk knit tie here right now. It's kind of mottled because it makes the look a little more casual, springy, just like the outside, the green and the leaves coming up. So I think it's a, it's a good way to do it. If your sweater has long sleeves, um, you need a jacket that has armholes that are big enough to accommodate that. Otherwise, it's quite uncomfortable. And so I always prefer to have vests or knit vests. And if you wear a tie, make sure you get a, a V-neck. So definitely something you can wear during the spring. Um, however it gets too hot, I'd stay clear of it because it's just another layer that insulates too much. Uh, can you give us tips on how to buy vintage on eBay? It's easy or common to get scammed. Well, honestly, I mean, eBay was everything basically I did when I was a teenager because I lived in a small town. There was no place to buy any quality clothes. And whenever I would uh, want to buy something, I'd either have to go to the next bigger city and then I couldn't afford it. So I either went up to uh, end up going to secondhand or vintage stores or buy on eBay. Um, the first thing to keep in mind is that you need to know what your size is and your measurements. So have something where you know how it fits and what the measurements are. For example, when you have a jacket, know your shoulder width, know your sleeve length, know the length from the back of the collar, know your waist size and your chest size. Those are the minimum measurements. And same for ties. If you buy a tie, know how long your ties usually are. If you buy a shirt, know how long the sleeves are. And if you can't find the measurements, ask people. Don't be afraid to ask. And so once you do that, and if you go with a vintage item and you know what to look for in terms of quality, I find that you hardly ever get scammed because scammers are usually um, dealing with luxury products or brand names. So if you buy a Ralph Lauren item, yes, the likelihood to get scammed is much higher than if you buy a Dax jacket. It's an old brand, but it's still good, but it's not around anymore. So I suggest to look more for things like the fabric and ask questions about it, or know, for example, Ralph Lauren purple label and know what the labels look like. So when you see an item, you know exactly, is this actually real or is it fake? Suede shoes in the springtime. Absolutely. Suede is perfect for spring and for fall, but I like it particularly in spring because it adds this kind of casual note to things. Brown is probably the first suede shoe that any person should have, probably a medium brown. Some people like a chocolate brown, even that works. Though in general, for spring, lighter colors are better. I have this um, really nice chucka boot, which is a sand color, and it's unlined. 
I think it's a perfect shoe for spring because it's also not too tall. So it's not too warm around the ankle, but it has that great summery feel. Um, what's your take on tie clips and tie bars? I mean, I have them. I wear them sometimes. It's an additional accessory. And overall, I just want to keep in mind that I don't overdo it. Sometimes people start wearing a vest and the tie bar, which then moves up too far. But we also did a video about tie bars, how to put them on, tie clips, and so forth. So I suggest you check that out because all of those things apply for spring as well. Any tips for traveling, travel style? What to pack to Europe for about three weeks in July? Well, Americans have the tendency to, to consider Europe as just one big thing, one continent. Now, the reality is if you go to Sicily, you'll have a very different climate than if you go to the north of Sweden or Finland. So first of all, figure out where you go. You can just go online, check out the climate diagram uh, that is usually the temperature during that time of where you go, and then pack accordingly. If it gets very hot, get open weave things, lightweight things, have some short sleeve polo shirts in there. Um, if it's not super warm, and all, especially at night, take a look at how the temperature drop off is, because sometimes it can be warm during the day, but not so warm at night. So make sure you have maybe a Harrington jacket or the appropriate things with you so you're not freezing. <clears throat> now, when you travel, you, you're limited in the sense of, of what you can bring, right? So try to create a wardrobe of interchangeable things. I traveled for 105 days once, and I just had two suitcases, basically. One bigger one, one small one, and everything I had during the time was in there. So I had a, a navy blue suit because I could combine just the jacket or just the pants. I had seersucker pants. I had a green fresco jacket. And I definitely played with accessories because even if I had just two jackets, I had so many accessories which just change up the look every time. So that's something to really invest in. Good springy accessories. Um, how do you stay comfortable in hotter temperatures in a suit? Now, I was in Naples once when it was really hot, and people there who wore a suit, and the majority doesn't, but the people who did, the men, they had kind of adapted to just sweating, and they were okay with it. Now, wearing a suit when it's really sunny outside means you should go for lighter colors. But because the difference between having a dark navy suit and a very, very light pale gray suit is huge. Of course, the khaki suit may soil more easily, you'll get stains more easily, but it really, really helps. Um, the next point is get something that's open weave. Open weave shirts, open weave, open weave um, fabrics like a fresco, and then try to kind of have, have a, yeah, socks maybe that you, or maybe skip the socks or, or take the no-show socks if it's a very informal suit. Otherwise, I'd stay with very thin socks, like uh, thin cotton socks over the calf or thin silk. Um, but they have to be thin. Like, don't get something in wool that's just too insulating. And uh, it's something you, you'll have to figure out if you're comfortable with it or not. Ultimately, some men prone are prone to overheat, others aren't. And it's, yeah, up to you how far you want to go. Oxford shirts in the spring. I think Oxfords are great when it's not too hot because they have that, that two-tone effect because like you have warp and weft in different colors and that is perfect for spring. I like a light blue Oxford, I like a white Oxford. However, it's a tight weave. So once the temperatures go up, um, I, started, I try to stay clear from Oxford because it's simply too warm for me. Um, by the way, check out our Oxford cloth button-down shirt guide and video. We talk a lot about all the intricacies, the kind of collar style, and when to wear it, and how to combine it. Um, is it appropriate to wear velvet Albert slippers or stubs in the summer? An interesting question. A lot of people um, wear these shoes. They're, they're bold. Um, usually they're velvet on the outside or have a certain kind of fabric, and then they're either a leather on the inside or polyester, like quilted. If it's polyester, you'll really sweat. And uh, so, personally, I think these shoes are perfect to wear around the house. 
Um, sometimes people wear them with like exotic black tie outfits. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of that. I limit the use to um, my own four walls basically and, and use them there, wear them there. I can see maybe at a garden party in your house. Otherwise, I think they wear out rather quickly. And there are lots of other spring summer shoes that you can wear instead, like a woven leather, for example, or suede. So I don't really see the need for it. If, if you want to go bold and, and wear those, oh, that's great. But it's not very breathable. It's just like loud in terms of colors. Tweed in the spring. Now, um, there are tweeds that are very heavy and uh, they're very densely woven. There are also tweeds that are very open. So if you're in Scotland or in Ireland or in England, you can definitely wear them. Go for the lighter ones. Overall, I find tweeds during the spring oftentimes challenging because I quickly overheat in them. So I stay clear of them. But they can be worn, I'd say, as long as the temperatures are below 60 degrees or about 15 degrees Celsius. Double monk strap shoes in spring. Yes, I would definitely wear double monks. Um, we have an in-depth monk strap guide. It's where we discuss the single monk and a double monk. I would say in recent years, a double monk has gotten way more popular. And actually, you see more pictures on Instagram or at Pity with double monks than single monks. So, which is quite ironic because the double monks 10 years, 15 years ago weren't really around. So if you want to kind of stand out, you can gravitate towards the single monk now. I like them in, in a tan because it's really nice for spring. It's a, it's a classic color, but it's a little bolder than something, let's say, a chocolate brown. So definitely big yes for double monks in spring. Can I wear a vest and a bow tie and not look like a waiter? Um, I think you basically mean just having a vest and a bow tie and no jacket. Now, waiters, in my experience, even in higher-end establishments these days, don't pay that much attention to their dress. It's something they have to wear, they're made to wear, and so more often than not, they'll have a pre-tied bow tie. Then also, the vest will probably not be long enough. They'll have a belt. So I'd say, if you want to wear that outfit and, and nail that look, make sure the fit of your vest is good, meaning it covers the waistband, meaning you don't have a, a belt. If it's single-breasted, and I think you should only wear single-breasted vests if you wear it without a jacket, then you know have the bottom button undone. Definitely get a self-tie bow tie, and you can learn how to tie it in our How to Tie a Bow Tie video. Um, so, otherwise, I think, go with a jacket. I think it looks more elegant. If you can't because it's too hot or you don't want to, those are the tips I'd have for you. <clears throat> How do you feel about light-colored ties with light-colored jackets? Well, I love light-colored ties for spring, like whether it's like this light blue or like an orange or purple or even pink. I think yellow, they're all great ties. When you have a lighter jacket, it depends on the color. I always try to create some kind of a contrast. I have a, a white Panama jacket. So then, you know, I don't, I'm going to wear a white or off-white tie with it. There has to be enough contrast. Maybe a stripe can help. Um, the texture should be different. So I have a, you know, a light, light blue spring linen summer jacket. So I wouldn't wear this tie with it. It's just too close and it blends in. I'd create some contrast. So definitely wear it. Just keep that contrast thing in mind and you'll be fine. How do you feel about... No. Okay. When wearing a suit in the spring, would it look odd in dark colors? Well, kind of depends. If you have a dark brown suit, I think it can be perfectly well um, suitable for spring. Ideally, you want to go with lighter colors so they're distinctly different. If you are in, a, in an office environment where dark suits are required, yes, you can still wear your, your gray suits. If you have more than one or two, I suggest you know investing in some that are just lighter in color and maybe have a, an open weave. So when I would also say single-breasted is nice because double-breasted adds two layers of fabric which make you kind of feel a lot warmer. And traditionally, double-breasted jackets were always more formal. 
Now, in recent years, people like Lino from Al Bazaar, and we did a style feature on him a while back, they they basically took the double-breasted jacket, made it part of a combination, wore it very soft, soft structure, soft shoulders, and were just buttoned on one button usually and very nonchalantly. So they've kind of changed the perception. And at PTOMO, for example, you see a lot of those double-breasted jackets that are more casual in that sense. So you can still do that. Just keep in mind, you'll be warmer. What is a tie knot today? Well, this one here is actually a simple four in hand, which I suggest for knit ties. These here are our Cri de la Soie knit ties, which is called Cry of the Silk. And I'm not sure if you can hear this, but here I can definitely hear a little crunch when I move the silk. And so they're thicker. And for that, I suggest you go with an oriental knot or a four in hand knot. Otherwise the knot is kind of odd and that's what you have to do. You're kind of limited by the material. Opinion on leather woven shoes. Do they last as long as normal leather dress shoes? Now, first of all, you have to distinguish between actual woven leather shoes, which are quite rare because these are hand woven leathers and leather that is embossed that looks like it's woven, which is much more commonplace these days. So um, I have both shoes in my wardrobe. A original hand-woven leather shoe is advantageous because just like with a fabric, it has that open, open weave, so you can feel the airflow nicer in the summer. Um, they're a little harder to polish and clean because the dirt gets in between. And they also, I would say, won't last as long as a regular leather dress shoes. The one that are embossed, and I have one in kind of a mid-brown, they're actually very similar to traditional leather shoes. The dirt gets in a little more easily, so you have to be a little more diligent when you clean your shoes, but otherwise they will last just as long. And it adds this extra springy texture that helps you make your outfits distinctly different. And I think it's a, it's a nice part because a new season means a new look and it's time to wear something else. Is Popeland open weave? Um, most of the time it isn't. And we actually did a dress shirt kind of about open weave fabrics. So ultimately you always have to look at it. You can even take a loop and, and, and take a look at it and, and see. You can stand in front of a little fan, hold up the shirt and feel how much air is coming through. And you do that with different shirts, you get a very good understanding of what fabric is actually open weave and which one isn't. What do you think of fedora hats? People tend to think of Indiana Jones nowadays when they see them. Yes, Indiana Jones definitely um, kind of coined that hat style. At the same time, it, it has been around for much longer than that. It was hugely popular in the US in, in the 30s. And if you go to like forums that are dedicated towards vintage clothing, such as the Fedora Lounge, you'll see a lot of men still liking those really high crown fedoras, wide brims. And I think it, it's a very elegant hat. Now, it's very hard to find them as a Panama shape because usually the, the brim is a little lower. I mean, you can find fedoras at a Panamas, but the typical 1930s style I find is, is harder to find. Stetson, I think, recently um, made some changes. There was a guy, Matt Deckard, he kind of worked with them and he's like a vintage hat lover. So definitely made Stetson produce hats that are more appealing to those kind of people. Um, but I think fedoras are nice. Will there be ever a time where men wear a hat just like they wear underwear today? I don't think that's going to happen. I think more men wear hats today than maybe 10 years ago, but I don't see a resurgence back to the day where every elegant man would wear a hat. Dinner jacket alternatives for spring. Well, you know, a dinner jacket is already kind of the alternative to a regular black tie outfit. Now, for spring, if you want to go out there, <coughs> sorry, I would say skip the velvet 
try to go with something in a Dupioni silk, which is similar to a Shantung silk in a sense that it has knobs and it has a two-tone effect. So that looks quite dapper. You could even go with something like a light blue or you could go with something like silver and black, which depending on how the light shines on it is black, but it has that Shanshan kind of color sparkle to it. I think that really makes all the difference for a um, dinner jacket. Also, you can get with a off-white dinner jacket, which is particularly well suited for spring summer events or when you're at sea. So if you want to keep it classic, I think go with the off-white because you can even wear that during the fall winter, but it's also perfect for spring summer. And then maybe, you know, go with a colored pocket square, maybe some colored socks, those kind of things, but keep, keep the bow tie black. Um, can you tell something about a trench coat? Well, it's a very wide question and we already have a trench coat guide with a video that's very much in depth. And so I suggest you go there, watch that video, read that article. Um, it's a good item for spring when you're in an area where it rains a lot or where it's colder because most of them have a, a liner that you can put in out of wool so you can adapt it. So that makes it last longer. And I like a trench coat to travel, especially in darker colors, um, because it doesn't get stained, looks elegant, it's not heavy, so it's a good travel companion. All right, we're hitting our half hour mark here. So I'd say if you have last questions, put them in now um, for the next minute, and then we're, we're done for today. So as for lighter color bow ties, what is your opinion on seersucker bow ties? Um, honestly, I'm, I don't like seersucker bow ties very much. It's just a personal thing because I wear shirts that are usually white or light blue or some that have stripes and pastel colors and seersucker with the white and washed out pastel colors is usually not contrasting enough. So I'd say if you have something that contrasts with a seersucker bow tie, wear it. But if it blends right into your shirt, I just don't think it's an advantageous look. Otherwise, yes, for spring, summer, a light bow tie, either in a stripe, such as, you know, some shantung bow ties or like a bourrette with some texture or some linen bow ties in olive green or orange, something springy are really nice. Just make sure they contrast your shirt. Essential colors for chinos. I'm just now building my wardrobe and want a base. Um... Basically, definitely make sure to check out our in-depth chino guide because we talk about all the intricacies and the cut and the details there. In terms of color, yes. If you ha don't have any, go with a classic khaki chino color. I think that's really, really nice. Specifically for spring, summer, I think a Nantucket red is something that's very like East Coast style, very preppy. Uh, so not everyone is comfortable wearing these. I like them, they make a bold statement, but um, if it's just your second pair, maybe go with something in a light blue, because it's distinctly springy, but it's not over the top. And you can wear it with like boat shoes and, and other items. Otherwise, if you want something more year round, go with a navy pair of chinos as well. They are definitely, navy and khaki are the most staples that men have. Once you, you have those covered, there's basically greens, or you can have a pastel yellow, many things that can work, but check out the guide. Black tie, dark red, or white boutonniere. Double monk straps with black tie. So, you know, it's a very personal choice. White is, is very classic, and so is dark red. The white contrasts less, so if you have a pocket square and a puff fold that is huge, I think the the red is nice. If you go with a fine TV fold and you just see a little strip of white, you can go with a white one too. But you can also think about maybe purple and um, yellow, for example. So you can really play it up. They're both appropriate. Nothing's wrong about it. It's just how much of a statement do you want to make? Double monk straps for a black tie? No. They are not suited for that kind of a formal event. They're too casual for that. Go with patent leather Oxfords or opera pumps, court shoes, whatever you want to call them. 
Um, they're particularly nice during the spring summer because they have a lower cutout vamp. So it's a great way to incorporate a colorful pair of socks because it's going to be much more visible, especially when you, let's say, pair it with your pocket squared, your boutonniere can look very dapper. Could you speak on the differences between pure linen clothing versus linen cotton blends versus linen silk blends? Yes. So pure linen clothing um, can depend a little bit on the finishing. Uh, you can have Irish linens which are very rough and coarse. So if you get an unlined pair of pants, I find it can almost be chafing if you walk around all day. Um, pure linen also wrinkles in a very sophisticated way, but they're bold wrinkles. So if you're active all day at a trade show or something, you will see big wrinkles at the end of the day, and it's a look that you have to be comfortable with. If um, you go with a linen, like Italian linen are oftentimes finished a little softer, that can be more comfortable to wear. A linen cotton blend basically adds uh, some softness to the blend, which I think makes it more comfortable to wear. Um, it also wrinkles differently because cotton has like smaller wrinkles, linen has bigger wrinkles. And so the, the different blends like 30, 70, 70, 30 also have an impact on the overall look. I think linen cotton blends are, are, are great for summer. They're also good for shorts or slacks. Linen silk blends are very interesting because silk adds a little bit of shininess. And silk is a very um, durable fiber. So usually what happens is the fabrics are a little thinner because silk is more insulating than linen. And uh, so you don't want it to be too thick and look for that kind of open weave. I think silk linen is, can be nice for, for jackets or um, for suits maybe, but just pants on its own, probably not. I once had a silk linen pants and they're even more soft and they feel more luxurious than a linen cotton blend. So they're somewhat durable, but um, they're not super easy to maintain because silk loses the color more easily. So uh, maybe don't wear it in areas if you know where it gets very hot and you sweat a lot. Linen and linen cotton blends don't have that issue of color bleeding. What are the best shoes to wear with linen pants? Well, that depends on the color. Um, and it basically is a mix of how to combine your pants with your shoes and your socks. We did a video about that, just about colors. If you want something more springy, let's say you have a tobacco brown linen or something, and you want to go really springy, you could go with a white pair of bucks, buckskin shoes, you know, um, maybe some colorful shoelaces that give you that springy feel. You can also go with like tan. And overall, if you have linen as a spring summer color, go with lighter colors of brown or a personal favorite of mine is like olive green. I think it works really well. And if you have linen in all kinds of brown, um, it looks spectacular. Well, thank you very much for being part of our style session. I hope it was valuable to you. Please leave feedback in the comments. They stay on uh, permanently so we can kind of figure out what you liked, what you disliked, and stay tuned for our next live session. We'll now um, develop kind of a, a schedule and we'll share it with you and stay tuned for tomorrow's video which is going to be interesting so have a good one bye bye